how to handle it. They don't know what to do. My own personal experience being a manager is that no matter how good the advice might be, no, ma no matter how many accountants that I attempt to get from my fighters, no matter how many trust funds that Bill Caton and I set up, nothing seems to work. The fighters generally, generally, they end up with no money. What he thinks is, hey, I, can, I got tomorrow, I'm going to knock out another guy. So I'll go on and use this, you know what I mean? And if he puts it in a trust, he will penetrate the trust. He'll find some reason to open that trust up, you know what I mean, to take that money back with the idea in his mind that he will put it back on his next fight. And he continues to do this year after year after year, and then the evening begins to come in his career, and he don't realize that he don't have that many more fights left, and uh, he finds himself in the same predicament that everyone else finds himself in, he'd be broke. Mike Weaver could have easily ended up in that very same predicament, but given four title shots, he's been fortunate enough to learn from his mistakes. My uh, financial, day, financial status today is good, you know, but, but I did lose a lot of money. I would have had a lot more if I wouldn't have lost so much, but it's still good. As for Pinklin Thomas, it's rumored that he is in financial straits. Managerial problems continue to plague him. Much of his money is tied up in court battles and pending lawsuits. We talk about figures, you know, you talk about big figures, but um, securing figures, they're not there, you know. Uh, that's what ma possesses me to maintain uh, the hunger to want to uh, have what I feel I deserve. For Mike Weaver and Pinklin Thomas, boxing has been more than learning how to protect oneself in the ring. It's been learning how to protect oneself for the future upon leaving the ring. And now I'm basically I'm learning about real estate. That's why I want to go into boxing. Uh, after boxing is a buy property in real estate. That's what I'm, my next interest. That's what I'm learning about now. I'm uh, into reading a lot about creating your own wealth and investing. As long as there is a sport of boxing generating millions of dollars, some will gain, others will lose. What the future holds for Pinklin Thomas and Mike Weaver is uncertain at best. The question is whether they'll make millions like Max Schmeling or lose it all like Joe Lewis. Time will write the last chapter. Well, will this be the last chapter for this man? Mike Weaver is already in the ring. He's a guy who's been around the track numerous times. He's been in there against champions numerous times. Here's the record of Mike Weaver. And, Ray, I think it's fair to say it's a little bit of a deceptive record because a lot of his losses came before he ever got anywhere near a championship fight. Well, that's true because, quite naturally, this Mike Weaver is a true competitor. Well, he's had two different careers. Uh, six years ago, when he fought Larry Holmes, he had eight defeats. What a sensational fight against Holmes. He's only lost one fight in the last six years, and that was that controversial one-round stoppage against Michael Doak. Which I might say was one of the worst decisions I've ever seen. Here's the champion, Picklin Thomas, making his way toward the ring now. He looks all business, but somewhere in the back of his head, an awful lot of things going on. Thomas, of course, the great jab. Still some question as to whether or not he's got a right hand. Well, a Pinklin Thomas, this fight does have an added significance. He's fighting a tough opponent, but he's also fighting some fighters' greatest fear, injury. Pinklin Thomas has not wanted to talk about the injury to his right eye, but we asked him if the detached retina would affect him mentally tonight. I ain't going in with no mental blocks, nothing setting in my way to... Why am I going to crave or be all uptight about an injury? As far as I'm concerned, it's history. Uh, my whole life has been a gamble, you know, and it's a continuation. So Picklin Thomas is in the ring now, bedecked in, of course, what else? Pink. A little bit darker shade of pink than he had the last time. Here's his record. Can't get much better than that. 25 victories. He hasn't lost. He has the one draw with Trotsia. 20 knockouts. But there's still, even despite the fact that he has had 20 knockouts, right, there's some question as to whether or not he can really punch. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now. And there are a couple of interesting numbers here. The most significant number that we'll see in the tail of the tape is the weight of Mike Weaver. 221 and a quarter. And in his last fight, he was 209 and a half. And he says he was 238 three, 
three weeks ago. He says that when he fights as low as 209, he feels weak. He fought Larry Holmes six years ago at 201. I'm not sure what any of it means. And of course, another big number, 33 years old is Weaver, Thomas 27. There are the common opponents. Thomas, the only draw, only thing to mar an otherwise perfect record with Jerry Kotsia. Weaver knocked him out. And Quick Tillis, both men emerged victorious. Thomas knocked him out. Let's take a look and now at some is, of the numbers. Here's Punch Dad, our computer toy, Pinklin Thomas against Kotsia. Threw only 12 jabs around, landed eight. And against Witherspoon, he threw almost four times that many. He was concerned about Kotsia's right hand. That's why he didn't throw that many jams. And, of course, the number of punches per round in those two fights also reflected in his concern about Kotsia. And so you wonder how concerned he is of, about Weaver, who is acknowledged as the heavier puncher. And here is Weaver in his two fights against Kotsia and in his 15-rounder against Dokes. Landed about half of his punches in both of those fights, two more against those. Well, the rules for this fight, as they were in the fight you just saw, a 10-point must system, three judges score the fight, not the referee. You can't have a standing gate count. You can be saved by the bell only in the final round. The ring doctor, as you mentioned, can stop the fight. Right now, let's go up to the ring announcer. Chuck Cowell will get the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next contest of the evening... The judges are Herb Santos, Dave Moretti, and Dick Cole. The timekeeper is Al Bisek. Counting at the knockdowns, Jane Broadfoot. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Donald Romeo and Flip Pomansky. And your referee is Carlos Padilla. Representing the WBC at ringside, Mr. Swain Ford and Mr. Bob Bussey. Representing the Nevada State Athletic Commission at ringside, Mr. Sig Rogic, Mr. Art Lurie, and Mr. Freddie Little. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the blue corner, the challenger from Diamond Bar, California, weighing 221 and one quarter pounds, with a professional record of 27 wins, 10 defeats, one draw with 18 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the former WBA heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Hercules Weaver. And in the red corner, fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 220 and one quarter pounds, he is undefeated in his professional career with 25 wins, no defeats, one draw with 20 KOs. The WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Pinklin, Pinky Thomas. Thomas is a two to one favorite in this fight. But I have found a surprising amount of support for Weaver among observers whose okay. opinion I respect. They just feel that that Weaver is the much stronger puncher, uh, that he's going to hurt Thomas to the body, perhaps, and maybe throw a punch over one of his jabs. Carlos Padilla, the referee, and the instructions. Okay. Thomas Weaver, <coughs> you are going to box for 12 rounds. You know the rules of boxing. Avoid using any kinds of power. Don't throw any punches during the break. Is that clear? Seconds come out fighting. So what's left then is to decide this issue once and for all. Hercules is Mike Weaver's nickname. You look at Pinklin Thomas, and he is sartorial splendor. I don't guess you buy those pink shoes off the shelf, huh, Ray? Well, I think everyone is Weaver has been a notoriously slow starter in the past. Round one. Let's see what Thomas brings to the dance and what Weaver does early. Well, as I was stating earlier, people want to see whether or not Pinklin Thomas is going to stick to his game plan of trying to fight Weaver inside, which has a chance of being a big mistake because of the power of Mike Weaver. Weaver has a tendency once in a while to be a little bit lazy. Doesn't really get himself in gear, so he has to know that this is just about his last hurrah. The jab, the left jab of Pinklin Thomas is the most effective left jab I've seen outside of Larry Holmes. They say the best, perhaps, in boxing since Sonny Liston. Now look at the left jab of Mike Weaver. The 
left jab of Mike Weaver's already busting the mouth of uh, Pinkland Thomas up already. Blood coming from the mouth of Pinkland Thomas, the champion, early on here. Start to choke on that, it could be a problem. <laughs> possibly indicate a jaw injury of some sort. <laughs> it is a solid jab put out there by Pinkland Thomas. And you can see the damage is doing. It's a little abrasion, abrasion over the left eye of Mike Weaver. Very early on here. So there's blood from the mouth of Pinkland Thomas and a little abrasion along the eye of Mike Weaver. And we are just halfway through the first round. The right hand. Good right hand by Mike Weaver. Weaver back Thomas up with that right hand. A lot of action early on here. Well, Pinkland Thomas doing what he stated. He go, he's not going to run. He's going to stand toe to toe. Oh, Believe it or not, the jab, the left jab of Thomas is quite well stronger than his right hand because he's a converted southpaw. Came over with a right hand. That was a good shot. Backs Weaver up. And Thomas is right on Weaver. Weaver is down. is hurt. Mike Weaver is hurt without question. It took Thomas a little bit of time to get to a neutral corner. And now Padilla picks up the count. He's Weaver's still in trouble. His legs are rubbery legs. Weaver trying to come back. Let's see if Thomas doesn't go after him. He's got a great jab. And another big right hand. Beautiful right hand. Weaver's still in trouble against the ropes. He's got 12 seconds to get through. Another big right hand by Thomas. Thomas showing much more of the right hand than he has any other time we've seen it. Well, we asked a question before whether Thomas would come out behind that thunderous right left jab, and he sure did. He threw a lot of right hands. All right. Mike Weaver is disgusted with himself in the corner. Come on, Steve, you beat him, Matt. Come on. Get out, fool. All right, Mike. All right. All right, sure. Let's take a look at some of the action. There you see it, a wild Thomas right hand, but then a straight one. Those are arm punches, but they've landed on, on Weaver, and Weaver is flustered and goes down. I didn't think he was seriously hurt. I just thought he was flustered and lost his balance, although the punches landed flush. I thought it would be a big mistake for um, Pinkler Thomas to stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but apparently it's working. We said Weaver started slowly. It seemed that he was determined to start fast, but about two-thirds of the way through that round, it caught up with him. So we come to the second round. Have to go some to be more up-tempo than at first. The reason Mike is being hammered by Pinkler Thomas is because he's a stationary talk. He's standing directly in front of Thomas. Pinkland Thomas fighting a much more up-tempo fight than I've seen him fight before. Oh, two good body shots by Weaver hurt Thomas. Mike has to stop moving his head. And see, the jab of Pinkland is not, not pity pat. It's a lot of power behind it. It, it has, a, has capability of busting you up. Two jabs by Weaver on the face of Pinkland Thomas. Weaver still has a lot of strength left. There's no question about that. And you can also see that the eye of Pinkler Thomas does not bother him at all. Mike Weaver, a more dangerous fighter as things go along. But a stationary target for Pinkland Thomas. And a thumb, and Weaver yells at Carlos Padilla. Thumb to the left eye. And they are using a glove that is supposed to prevent that tonight. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Well, it has the reason, a webbing in it. But the reason uh, the webbing does not help because it's, it's in the middle of the thumb and hand. Weaver still being bothered by it, took an uppercut. 
still bothers him. They need to bring that, that attachment right there at the tip of the thumb. Right hand a little bit short by Mike Weaver. One minute remaining. What could, left hand by Thomas. What could be the case now? Due to that thumb, um, Weaver's vision could be slightly blurred. That's what normally happens. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. There's he, been a lot of bombs thrown in the first two rounds here. Without question. And they're putting all their body behind it. I've seen more damaging punches in the first two rounds of this fight than in the entire Witherspoon Smith fight. And still, Mike Weaver rubs that eye that he says he was thumbed in. Ten seconds remaining, second round. Twelve round fight, this for the championship. Good round of boxing. Well, they're going after each other, these two battleships. I know he did. I know he did. They're tending to the eyes of Mike Weaver in the corner. Look, Mike. But he seems all right now. What you got to do, you got to stay in his body. All right. All right. All right. All right. Just get the cold. We may have a picture of that thumb right here. Right there, you saw the punch. Yeah. Here it is again. The wonders of television. No question about it. And it was inadvertent, it seemed. It seemed that the, the hand landed flush on the brow, but the finger wandered into the eye. That's it. Good one. Come on. Go to your left. Yeah, come on. Come on. Mouth with your Mike Weaver already has a mountain to climb to get back into this fight. Not the first time. <laughs> of course, against Big John Tate, he was out of it. He was a loser until the last few ticks. You can never count Mike Weaver out. He, he possessed that power throughout the fight. And he has had some pretty good body shots against Pinklin Thomas in this fight. Well, that's what they want him to, to continue to do, to work that body. And slow down some of the movement of Pinklin Thomas. That was a right hand, a little bit of a glancing blow. Angelo was Angelo Dundee was telling Pinkett Thomas to continue to move to his left, to concentrate on that, that area. few left hooks thrown by Mike Weaver. And Mike is known for a devastating left hook. That's one of his best punches. A lot of solid punches being thrown at close range here by both men. It's been a very fast pace from opening round. And these guys can't keep this up the entire fight. Left hook by Mike Weaver. I tend to wonder whether or not this additional weight of Mike Weaver is starting to bother his, his power. Weaver getting some good short punches in on Thomas. There was a right hand by Thomas that backed Weaver up. Mike has a very good left jab, and he should, be continue, well, he should continue to use it. A couple of open-handed punches by Weaver there. Now, this is when Mike Weaver needs to go to work. To the body. Both men scoring heavily. Good left hand, two good left hands oh. by Weaver. He rocked. And Thomas is hurt. He rocked Pickles' his thing. Weaver definitely had the better of that. Don't be misled by the fact that Weaver was pushed off him into the ropes. Close to glove, close to glove. Fight now, it's and the like crowd seems supportive of Weaver. Beautiful right hand. Never could 
left hand by Weaver. That's Stop. Buckle. Thomas in his tracks. That's buckle Pickman Thomas. And there's a cut over the left eye of Pickman Thomas. Mike is starting to go to work now. Oh. Let's watch that. It looks like a very bad cut on Thomas's eye. But I can't be sure whether it's just a laceration or a deep cut. Angelo Dundee is working on it furiously. Lay your head on his chest and drive the shots to the body. That's off the body. Come up with short left hooks. Left hooks on the top and right. And right hand through the middle. Shot. Lay your head on his chest, don't go back. That's the voice of Don Manuel, who is the trainer of Mike Weaver, even though we're watching Thomas. Big round for Mike Weaver, this the fourth. The cut will be a factor. Two left jabs by Weaver. The cut is over the left eye. Right at the moment. And there's a big right hand by Weaver. Thomas is hurt again. I just heard Mike Weaver's wife. And another combination. There was some consternation between rounds. We'll try to find out exactly what happened. Ray Leonard is trying to find out just what happened. It was in the audience somewhere involving something with Mike Weaver's wife. His wife, they say she collapsed. We'll That's try to keep you posted. And blood started to show above the left eye of Thomas. Listen to the crowd. Weaver, Weaver, he has become the favorite here. Pinkley Thomas being hit by those left hooks and right hand of uh, Mike Weaver because he's moving back. And Angelo was telling Thomas not to back up because he makes himself susceptible to take those shots. Thomas also breathing through his mouth like a tired fighter. Look for some body shots by Mike Weaver now. Weaver's been there, remember. A lot of experience. <laughs> Weaver just looks, looks right now like he's trying to pick one shot. And it's a mistake that he's making because he's given Pickett Thomas an opportunity to get back into this fight because he was hurt. <laughs> Look at the left jab of Mike Weaver. Very effective. <laughs> the cut is not really any trouble right at the moment to Pinkman Thomas. Very little blood showing. <laughs> <laughs> Two good jabs again by Weaver. Very strong jabs. I mean, they've talked about Pinkman Thomas's jab, but Weaver's jab has been every bit as effective in this fight. <laughs> right on the mouth of Mike Weaver from Pinkman Thomas. Mike Weaver a little off balance there, and he's he's trying to get that right hand through. Heavyweights here. And a jab of Weaver, very effective. That's not to take anything away from the one of Thomas. And again, the jab of Weaver in the face of Thomas. This is a jabbing contest. But I mean, they're strong jabs. Mike looks prepared to throw a body shot the way he leans because he digs it in. At the bell, just to clear up what happened between rounds we mentioned that Mike Weaver's wife passed out what actually happened was that Mike Weaver's mother got in a fight <laughs> did she win okay man, give me some deep breaths way up way up all right head out here come on now listen Mike here's what you ready to do you've got to keep taking it to him you jab jab you hurt him then you back off here that gives him the initiative you understand Stay with this guy. Keep jabbing, but two jabs all the time. And he's got a body. You're forgetting that body. When you get inside, sit your jab. Nothing else. Tie up the left hook. Be close, okay? When you try to get in. Come on, I you for the bad, bad fight, son? Come on now, pick it up. When you try to get in close, so close. A little more grease on this. Keep
seconds out. Come on. Please, 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 please. Step up. Come on. Go to work. It's going to work. They look like they're working pretty hard to me, right? They're working Angela hard. wants them to work harder. This is the fifth round. It's been a great fight so far. Angela wants Thomas to tie up that left hook because that left hook, of Mike Weaver has been landed. And it's nothing to play with. that you want to hear. Oh, and in Weaver's corner, they were telling him, you're the one that's backing off. Don't back off. Stay on top of it. Look at the jabs now and what's happening. Good left hook by Pickle Thomas. But Mike Weaver's jab has more authority on it now. Pickle Thomas' jab is more consistent. Good left hook. You have to be impressed by anything without heavy division. Is there ability to take a punch? There's a right hand by Thomas, but Weaver says, no, it didn't harm me none. Two more jabs. appears to be a much better fighter since that uh, unfortunate lo well, win by disqualification to Tony Anthony back in November. He seems to be a new fighter, newborn fighter. He has had a roller coaster career to be sure. And why Mike can't get that right hand in cleanly is because he, he raises up. He throws two jabs and he comes up. Again, no further damage on that cut above the left eye of Pinklin Thomas. You don't see him wait for these, these kind of left jabs that often. Very, very, very seldom you see this, this type of punches going. That was a paw in the left hand that time by Thomas. Did not have the sting that he had earlier. A, a right hand would work beautiful against Pinklin Thomas because what's that left hand? He keeps it down. Just laying there. It's all the way down by his thigh. Reminds you of Thomas Hearn. But Hearns is fast. A lot fast. <laughs> Mike looks so tired. He does look tired. I was just gonna say, right at the moment, Pinkman Thomas looks the fresh body shot by Mike Weaver. Good body shot. Takes the right hand. again, hammering Thomas. Tremendous pace in this fight. Unbelievable. Gotta start moving, baby. Give him a wrist, Pink. Go inside and around, Pink. Give him a wrist. inside, miss one punch, go inside and around. Don't go straight back. Hey, you're making this guy come first, Pink. You can't do that, son. Son, you can't do that, okay? Take a look at Mike Weaver as he goes to work here. I thought Thomas slipped all of those punches, actually. And that was just a pawing right hand. But there was a good punch inside. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? You gonna go to work on this guy? Let's go to work, please. Mike Weaver's body punching Mike Tell in this fight, conditioning Mike Tell in this fight. It's a terrific heavyweight fight right now. Sixth round, scheduled for 12. There's a cut on the inside of um, <laughs> Pickle Thomas left lip. Lower lip, brother. That was there almost from the opening bell, actually. Thomas seemed a little tired in the middle of the fifth round, but then finished with a rush. So he might have just been pacing himself. Now Mike Weaver is retreating. 
It's not in his best interest. Mike fights, Mike fight is to take the fight to his opponent. He's far more effective that way. Backing up, Thomas can use that jab. Tempo has slowed a little bit here in the sixth round. talk about um, how great the left jab of Pippa Thomas is. And now I see Mike Weaver throwing a, a number of left jabs. So he, could, he possibly could be psyching out Pippa Thomas to say, hey, my jab's just as good as yours. And I'm not too sure, but at least on this night, it isn't. He's been very effective with it. <laughs> Two good runs that time by Thomas. Two good runs coming back by Mike Weaver. And there's a couple more. They're just bothersome. The left jab, it's a thing of beauty. And both of these guys are executing it so well. And it's very active. Good left hook by Mike Weaver. continues to back up, but while he's doing so, he's throwing a very crisp jab. I said earlier that Weaver had a mountain to climb, and I think he's climbed it, and I have him ahead by a point so far in this fight. Kind of bend down and hit him with right hand to the kidney, and try to set him up with your left hook. Give me a wrench. Give me a spit bucket. Spit bucket! Bring this spit bucket here. here. Okay, give him a wrench. Spit it here. Pink. Right over here, Pink. Pink, son. Right over here. Hit him right, right over here. Okay. Jab him, hit him a right hand around the Pink. body. We're listening Please. to Don Manuel in the other corner as well as this fella. corner with Pinklin Thomas. Double jab on the guy. You shouldn't take a jab from this fella. Hit him a right hand. Too good a fighter for this guy. Let's right go to work. Right around the body. Vaseline, sit your left hook. You hit him with left hook to the joint. Okay, my piece. My piece. My piece. Left hook. Seventh round, still a long road to hoe here. <laughs> Incidentally, what we were hearing there was only Pinklin Thomas's corner. We were not hearing Mike Weaver's corner. A little hard to tell sometimes with the audio in the corner that gets jumbled. The right hand of Thomas started to get through. <laughs> They've done a great job, incidentally, on the cut of Pinklin Thomas. It has been no bother to him since it happened. Good right hand. Mike uh, appeared to have buckled him by the right hand. Yes, he did. Took a full step back. There's a right hand by Weaver. And now Thomas holds on. No question about it, but both guys are starting to hurt each other. But I think what, what is happening, they're hitting each other with their best shot, and they stop it. They need to stop following up those shots. And I'm surprised that Mike Weaver is not still attacking the body of Pinker Thomas. It's there, especially when he's close. Three-punch combination by Thomas backs Weaver up. These guys have done a lot of punches for the past six rounds. So they both are really fatigued. There's a good left hand right to the chin of Mike Weaver thrown by Pinkman Thomas. Uh, you can tell that Thomas is really tired because he, he throws that jab and he just drops it. I mean, actually, that's a ball. 
but he still has a snap. And they both do. I think they're both tired, but they both are still bombing. And I think probably there's a little bit of a hesitancy really to follow up because you always have to allow for the fact the man's going to be standing there and you got to have some left. Goes up. Well, just then, Thomas threw an uppercut, right uppercut. That was a good punch because it was happening. Mike Weaver was starting to fall, fall in. <laughs> a jab of Thomas is really bothering Weaver. Jab by Weaver once more. And vice versa. coming your way. World Championship Boxing on HBO continues Saturday, August 10th, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific. We'll be on hand live for the Jose Luis Ramirez defending his lightweight title against the Macho Man, Hector Macho Camacho. Okay. Nice. some deep breath. Real deep. deep. Real deep. Come on. Real deep. Feel a wrong though. Okay. You got to go to a mic. And you're doubling up jab. You see you miss it in here. The body. Trying his body. If you have to do it the wrong way, but shoot, shoot more than one shot. Two and three shots at the time. You understand? Back him up. You know what I'm saying? Back him up all the time. Okay. Keep that left jab going. Which fighter is in better condition? Which fighter is hungrier? Well, here's the first step to that answer. Thomas comes out quickly here, up on his toes early in this round. Thomas, just to the eye, seems to be the pressure at the moment. Weaver's corner wants more body shots. And I think a very good, uh, something, the very good instruction. You can see can... Weaver visibly take a deep breath and blow it out. Oh, yes, I mean, he's really tired. But he can make Thomas even tired about throwing body shots and slowing him down. There was the uppercut thrown by uh, Thomas again. And he paid the price, took two body shots from Mike Weaver. <laughs> what I see in Piglet Thomas, he's throwing a few light punches, light jabs, and just waiting for Weaver to open up to drop the bomb. This has been a very technical fight on the part of both fighters. It's the eighth round coming down toward the half. Thomas didn't have a good right hand, but he showed people that a right hand do exist. I want to tell you, you don't see a lot of one-punch knockouts in the heavyweight division too much anymore. That was just about as picture-perfect as you can expect. It was executed so perfect. He took his time, he set up Mike Weaver, and he just released that right hand. Another one of the great fights, too. He had a tough opponent on his hands tonight. I think the last time we saw him fight Tim Witherspoon, Ray, we were impressed with Pinklin Thomas, particularly impressed with his jab. And I think after the fight, you and I were talking and said, this guy may be for real. And I think tonight, really, he's going to make an awful lot of believers out of people. Well, he wasn't just fighting a, uh, a little guy in there. Mike Weaver was a tough opponent for him. Let's take a look at it once more. I mean, this is postcard stuff here, Ray. Well, you can see Thomas 
setting Mike Weaver up. Well, we didn't get a chance to see it. It's happening so fast there. Over the top with the right hand. Here's another look from another angle. Let's see the jab. He just throws that right hand. Pitch it perfect. And he was out before he hit the canvas. Let's take one more look from yet another angle here. Watch the overhand right. You see the right hand, the left jab of Mike Weaver just dropped, and the counter right hand by Pinkman Thomas went over top. Looked like it hit him right between the eyes, actually. Uh, it, looked, it looked like it hit him very high on the head. It's not the type, or not the location, really, that you would think you could knock a man out that quickly with. Well, you saw that Mike was really hurt, too. He was out. And Pickland Thomas, a very happy man. He earned his pay tonight, I'll say that. And he fought a very tough customer. And right now, you really have to think that we may be looking at the brightest prospect in the heavyweight division. We'll talk more about that. Right now, let's go up to the ring announcer, Chuck Cullen, and get the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, one minute, 42 seconds of the eighth round. The winner by a knockout. And still, the WBC heavyweight champion, Pinkland, Pinky Thomas. Well, the usual assortment. Let's take a look then at punch stat. And there's an awful lot of numbers up there. There's one number that isn't up there. That was the biggest punch of the fight, of course. But take a look. 48% effectiveness for Thomas, 46% effectiveness for Mike Weaver, it was a very, very close fight in every aspect of the fight, right? Well, there was a lot of punches thrown by both fighters, devastating punches landed by both fighters. And I think what the viewers, our viewers at home are, have seen tonight, witnessed tonight, rather, are the cream of the crop in the heavyweight division. What do you suppose went through the mind of Pinkland Thomas when he got cut up above the left eye? Well, I tell you, he kept his cool, he maintained his cool, and he kept that jab up. I'm so impressed with this jab, now I'm impressed with his right hand. All right, let's go up to the ring now where Larry Merchant is with the winner and still champion, Pinkland Thomas. Larry? Pinkland, where have you been hiding that right hand? Well, I'll tell you, I was told I'd never throw a right hand like that since I knocked out Leroy Caldwell in the 10th round. But first of all, I want to give Don King a lot of credit for putting on the immaculate show Bringing together a heavyweight championship right, well, for the number one contender. Please hold it there. Let me finish. I also like to thank the, the World Boxing Council uh, uh, for representing such a great organization. I also want to thank my corner men who made it all possible to make it to put me in the top flight shape and give me the publicity that I needed. And HBO for televising. <laughs> As long as you said that, we're all right. <laughs> Franklin, but tell us, where were you hiding the right hand? Was it because of the of the fact that you had damaged that hand and had it, had it operated in the past that you hadn't thrown it as much as you did tonight? Well, my left hand has been operated on three times. My, my right has only been operated on one. I've always had a, a good right hand. It's just never been exposed. Uh, Fortunately, I, I was clocking. We were seeing him getting tired in the later rounds, and it, I knew I was going to eventually land it. All right, it looked like he gave you some real trouble third to the fifth and sixth rounds. Were you surprised at the strength of his jab against your jab? No, I think Mike is, uh, as I said, he was one of the best out there. He was the best. He was the number one contender. But that's over now. That's history. I want peanut head Larry home. All right. All right. But, Beacon... Was that as good a right hand? Uh, did you, Where yeah. Did, did, Where yeah. Pinklin, did you see him noticeably tiring all of a sudden around the eighth round, night around the seventh round, and looking for the right hand? Excuse me, I ain't Were you consciously me. looking to land that right hand at that well, time? Well, I knew that he was carrying his left low, and when he jabbed, he dropped it. And I got him looking at the, my left jab when I double jabbed it, and uh, I was really trying to close his eye or cut him. But unfortunately, that didn't come so. I seen him getting tired, and all I had to do was lean in with the right hand, and I would nail him. Were you surprised that he came back from the earlier knockdown as well as he did? No, uh, I anticipate that. <laughs> Seems like every time you get a guy in the first round, it never ends in the first. So I had to take my time and pace myself because he is a devastating puncher. What about your eye? Were you concerned about it? Did it ever bother you? No, I, I, hey, I feel great. I have no problem. I'm, I feel magnificent. Were you hurt? No. You were never hurt? I was never you, hurt. Because it looked like you were a little bit flustered there for a while. Well, you know, bit. if you don't get hit in the game and feel it a little bit, something's wrong with you. So, uh, of course, I, you know, I felt his shots. He's a great puncher. But uh, 
uh, fortunate enough my right hand came through for me. And uh, I'm just Phil Adele. I want to give a, this guy a lot of credit. This guy has really did a number for me. And John Sue Lee, uh, who, who got me in shape for the last eight months. Eight what are weeks. your plans now? What would you like to do in the best of all possible worlds? I want to cut Larry Holmes off at the pathway. I want Larry Holmes to get in the ring and prove to the world that he's the reigning heavyweight champion that he say he is. If Mr. Don King, the entrepreneur of boxing, can put it together, another D-Day, bring in the Marines because it inspired me, and we can do it. But you know that Larry Holmes, after he say, saw you tonight, he's 100 miles away already. But he was cheering for <laughs> Weaver. He was cheering Weaver on. I heard him. I just couldn't stop in the middle of the fight to say nothing to him. And I want him better than a monkey eat one peanut. I want him. I want him because I feel that he's robbing the people of their money. He got to come out and fight a real contender. I'm the real heavyweight champion of the world. The, the, I carry the title that represents 104 different countries. The WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Ain't no reigning. Ain't no WBA. Ain't no IBF. We got to clean it up you right think, now. Do you think the decisiveness of this win will give you the credibility to be a champion that people will accept you now. All due respect to uh, to uh, to uh, Don King, HBO, uh, those who can put the fight together, the IBF or whoever is involved. Uh, let's do it. Let's put it together. Let's make it. Thank you, Finkelman Thomas. You, say, Don? you made it tonight. <laughs> and now back to Barry and Ray. Okay, thank you very much, Larry Merchant, and I think it's fair to say that the guy has got to be recognized as being quite a talent in the heavyweight division. As we mentioned earlier, we were impressed the last time. I can only speak for myself, Ray, but I was tremendously impressed with Pinklin Thomas, and I don't know how long Larry Holmes can logically duck him before there's a public outcry. Well, no question about it. Tonight uh, displayed the talent of our heavyweight division, just those four or five guys, and the fact that we're looking forward to some exciting fights now because all the other guys have been weeded out. Well, we talked about the fact that this would clear up what has been a very muddled picture. Do you really feel it has? Have we come away from tonight with two logical candidates as being the survivor to the heavyweight title? These two, Tim Witherspoon and Pinkman Thomas, quite naturally are the successes to Larry Holmes' crown. We should mention one other thing, too. There was a fight that was held earlier tonight between Trevor, Trevor Burbick and David Bay, both of whom had fought Larry Holmes, and there was a surprise in that one. Trevor Burbick won the fight, but I don't think really he can be considered of the caliber of Witherspoon or most particularly of Thomas. It wasn't a Trevor Burbick that we saw with Larry Holmes, against Larry Holmes, rather. He was lackadaisical in the fact that maybe there's too much pressure, the anticipation of fighting for a major fight again. Pinklin Thomas, of course, everybody had talked about what a great jab he has, and the big question mark about him, and we said this at the beginning of the fight, was can he punch? But I think he's really answered those questions. Well, I think Angelo Dundee has done a great job as far as having Pinklin Thomas settle down and get more leverage and power behind our right hand. Normally he raises up and he takes away the punch, but now he, he possesses some power in that right hand. All right, let's get back up to the ring then and some final thoughts from Larry Merchant. Larry? The heavyweight division seems to be running along on pr parallel roads. On one road, perhaps the high road, perhaps the low road, Larry Holmes, a longtime champion, is sort of exercising the divine right of kings, fighting who he feels like he can fight, fighting the least guy out there for the most amount of money as his reign starts to run out. On the other road have been a bunch of strong young men looking to assert themselves, and I think we saw that Pinklin Thomas asserted himself tonight. What we have to keep in mind is this. Larry Holmes is 28 years old when he won the title. When he was 25, 26, 27, nobody gave him a chance to be a champion, much less a dominant champion. Same thing for Rocky Marciano, whose record Holmes is pursuing. So I think that out of this top group of heavyweights, within a year, Pinklin Thomas, maybe Tim Witherspoon, Tony Tubbs, someone will emerge as a recognized champion. Back to Barry and Ray. Okay, thank you, Larry, and we want to remind you to join us as HBO Sports presents our...